All right, guys, today we're gonna actually be doing a engine block honing, do-it-yourself engine block honing. So I'm gonna try and save you some money from having to drop your engine off at the machine shop and wait, what, month, two months, ever how long it takes nowadays. Everybody's getting backed up. It's pretty crazy to find anybody that's good at what they do anymore. So I'm gonna teach you how to do this on your own at the house with minimum tools. So the big thing that you really wanna make sure that you do is pull the old squirters off should your engine actually have them. It's easy to come in contact with them whenever you're taking your flex home down in the bore. It's easy to nick them and damage your flex home and the old squirter. All right guys, so what you're gonna need at first is a quart of oil. I use synthetic, it's personal preference. Also, a thinner oil is gonna be better than a thicker oil in this situation. The thinner oil is gonna get in there into the grit of the flex home and really help do what you're trying to do with it. You're obviously gonna need your flex home. You're gonna to wanna to oversize to the bore. For example, the engine that we're doing right now is my LMM Deer Max. The bore is 103 millimeters. This flex home here is 118 millimeters. So it's gonna be oversized. If you go undersized, it's not gonna do anything. You're trying to remove the slightest amount of material. Also, make sure you got a large enough container so that you can take your flex home and get the appropriate amount of lubrication on the thing. You're gonna have it on your drill, so you're gonna need something that has a little bit of room in there. That way you can kind of lubricate it while you have it on the drill. So this is actually just the bottom of a Rotella uh, oil jug. Works pretty good. So once we move over to the engine here, you know, the main thing that you're gonna want to make sure of is that you have your crank journal on the, the farthest point away from the bore, essentially. So you don't want it up like as if it's at TDC. You want it down on like a compression stroke. That way you, there's a less chance of you hitting it because if you look at the end of this flex home, it's just a piece of coil mob steel. So it can do some damage if you don't, you know, pay attention to what you're doing. So with a moderate speed and an up and down stroking motion, you're gonna sit here and do about 25 strokes on this guy. If you can mimic the strokes that I'm doing here, it's gonna be a pretty good starting position for you. And I know I didn't get a chance to actually go over it at the beginning of the video, but the actual flex home that I'm using, it's a 118 millimeter flex home. So, Basically, whenever this thing goes down into the bore, it's going to obviously flex, but it's essentially like a little abrasive ball on the end of like a little flexible piece of plastic. You want to go oversized on your flex home. That way, it's actually doing something. If you undersize it, it's not going to be touching the cylinder wall, so it's not going to be doing anything at all. Also, I'm using 320 grit, and it is silicon carbide. So... The rings in which I'm putting in this engine here are Molly rings, and they're somewhat peculiar. They really do like that silicon carbide um, surface that's cut. If you look at this guy, it looks great. If you look at the other cylinders, man, they need some work. So we're, we're going to get there, so don't worry. But going back to this first one here, these little dots up there at the top that looks like heat marks, the actual bore is induction hardened from the factory, and that's just this engine. And, you know, yours may vary. Um, obviously, I'm trying to leave some room. This is a very broad overview video of how to do this, so I don't want to be everything specific. So you're going to get a good speed and a good stroke, and you're going to do somewhere up to 25 strokes. And then take you a can of brake clean, spray the cylinder walls down, and go in there with a decent light and just inspect the cylinder bore. And the main thing that you're looking for is rust or glazing. And glazing is kind of like that polished surface look. It's not going to be ideal for seating new rings. Um, the rings are not going to want to seat if you have glazing in the cylinder. It's just not going to bite. So make sure you have you know a good surface, a, you know, a good crosshatch pattern. And uh, this, this is a good example here. You know, up at the top, you're going to see these little dots. That's just surface hardening. Um, it's it's going to be induction hardened from the factory, and that's this block. That's the Duramax. You know, most engines don't have that. 
but don't think that we missed something there on the first cylinder. But looking at the second cylinder, man, glazing, rust, surface rust, you know, all sorts of stuff going on there. So you want to really get your bores really nice and, you know, good looking um, for your new rings, you know. And, then, and like I said, I'm running Molly rings you know, whenever I go to rebuild this engine. So we're running the 320 grit silicon carbide um, flex home. And it just does a really good job. It leaves a really nice finish. Uh, so the cross hatching in there, oil's going to get in there, it's going to stay in there. And surprisingly, there's going to be less friction on these bores that we just sat here and honed versus the shiny bores over here on these other cylinders. You would think it'd be the opposite, but the thing is, is with this having a little bit of a rough surface in these bores, it's going to provide a nice spot for oil to flow into and stay in there and provide a really nice lubricated surface versus where if it was polished in there, there's really no places in there for the oil to hide in. So having this semi-rough surface, and by semi-rough surface, I'm not talking about anything crazy, but a, a decent surface in there, the oil is going to pull up in those little low places and provide constant lubrication because as that ring's coming up and down, it's not able to really dig into these little nooks and crannies that you see in these bores. So the oil control ring is acting as a squeegee, but it's not able to really get in there and clean out all the oil. So then that oil provides lubrication for your compression ring and your secondary compression ring. So this it, honing the block is really essential in, you know, a correct rebuild of an engine. And just having that oil in there to lubricate your rings, you know, your rings are gonna last just that much longer. And that's going to translate to more miles, more hours you can run your engine. That's going to be, you know, more work that the vehicle can do. So, all right, for the sake of not making this video too long, I want to do a quick recap. Main things, keep the rod journal fuzzed away from you whenever you're working. That way there's less potential for you to come in contact with it. Lubricate your flex hone and periodically clean your flex hone with a brake clean. If you're going to inspect your bore, make sure to brake clean it, obviously. That way you don't get a false representation of what the bore looks like. And honestly, just do it, you know. Don't worry about it. It's, it's hard given the design of the flex zone to really mess something up. Appropriate speed, appropriate stroke. Don't stay in one spot too long and keep that stroking motion while maintaining a decent speed and you'll be set. Hey, I know how much new engines are, and I know this can be stressful. But as long as you don't do anything crazy and you follow this video pretty closely, you'll be set. Save yourself some time. Save yourself some money. Knock it out yourself. It's very simple. And at the end of the day, you'll be happy. You and your engine will be happy. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And feel free to like this video and share it on Reddit or Facebook or, you know, wherever you visit. Forms, if they even exist anymore. Shout out to the old people. Guys, have a great week. Love you guys. Bye.